Today we are going to be discussing the topic of electrostatic force. You might be very familiar with this topic from a very common example, a lightning bolt. A lightning bolt occurs when a group of charged particles called electrons gather in a cloud, and when enough of them gather, they travel through lightning bolt down to the earth. This causes a lightning bolt that we're that we often see. The same thing happens when you take your clothes out of the dryer in the dry winter months and that static charge zaps you. As you hopefully already know, everything that we know of in the universe is made of atoms. And atoms are made of smaller particles called subatomic particles. The three particles we are concerned mostly with are electrons, protons, and neutrons. Let's look at this more closely. Electrons are the lightest of the three charged particles. They have a negative charge, protons are the next subatomic particle, and they have a positive charge, neutrons are the third subatomic particle, they have a neutral charge. You can see where these three particles are located within the atom. The electrons are located in the outside rings of the atom. The protons are located in the nucleus of the atom. And the neutrons are also located in the nucleus of the atom. Protons and neutrons are said to be the heavy subatomic particles because they have a mass that is roughly 1,000 times that of the electrons. So we often say the electrons are massless and treat them that way in mathematical equations. So you may also already know that charged particles interact. If you have two particles with opposite charges, they will attract. If you have two particles with like charges, both positive or both negative, they will repel each other. These are the only two possible interactions. This same idea can be expressed with these fun smiley face charge balls. Again, you have two opposite charges attracting to each other and two like charges repelling each other. Additionally, <clears throat> additionally, we can also compute the force in between these two charges using something called Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law is named for the French physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb, pictured here on the left. Coulomb's Law is a simple expression that allows us to find what the force of attraction or repulsion is between two charged particles a set distance apart. Coulomb's Law is a straightforward equation that tells us that if we have two charges, or two particles with a charge, that are some distance apart, we can relate them with the equation that the force elastic equals the letter K, which is a constant we'll discuss in a moment, times the charge 1 times the second charge divided by the separation in between them squared. You will note this equation looks very similar to the universal law of gravitation we just learned about and can be treated in a very similar way. Another thing to note is that the unit of charge is the coulomb. Something having one coulomb of charge is a very large number. And typically we'll see charges that are very small. So this will require us to review our metric prefixes. As one example, you may see a charge that is 6 nanocoulombs, which is a small n for the prefix. You, of course, will recall that that means 6 nanocoulombs would be the same as 6 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. There may be other metric prefixes that you'll need to look up. Additionally, the value of k that we saw in the last slide is 8.5. 9, 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons times meters squared divided by coulomb squared. Much like the large G in the universal law of gravitation, this value is the same everywhere that we operate. Another way we will often see this equation expressed is with absolute value bars around the numerator because Coulomb's law only computes the magnitude or strength of the electric force, not the direction. 
Additionally, recall Newton's third law, that if charge 2 applies a force on charge 1, then charge 1 applies an equal and opposite force back on charge 2. As a brief exercise, let's see if we can rank these four pairs of particles. Take a moment and look at them and see what you think. In order to answer this question, we're going to utilize Coulomb's Law, which is written here on the right. So we can go through each pair and see how qualitatively it would affect the equation. The first two pairs both have charge of Q on both sides. So the numerator would be the same for both of those, Q times Q. They're also the same distance apart, so the, new, the denominator would also be the same. So pair 1 and pair 2 have the same force in between them. Pair 3 has the same separation as the first two, so the, den the denominator would remain the same, but both of the charges in the pair have a larger number of coulombs, so you would have a 2 and a 2 in the equation, hence making the force 4 times bigger, which means that pair 3 would be larger than pair 1 and pair 2. Lastly, pair 4 still has the double charges, so the numerator for pair 4 would be the same as the numerator for pair 3, but now the distance is cut in half, and as we discussed with the universal law of gravitation, when the two particles are closer together, that's going to increase the force. Additionally, since the denominator is squared, when you have the distance, you make the force four times greater. So if we go through, and if we say that pair one has a force of F, Pair 2 has a force of F also because the same charges and same distance between them. The only difference is that pair 1 would be attractive and pair 2 would be repulsive. Pair 3 would be equal to 4F for the force in between them because we doubled both charges. And then pair 4 would actually be 16F. would be 16F. because now we have the distance in between them. By way of example, let's find the electrostatic force between these two particles. Particle A, we would say, has a charge of 5 millicoulombs. Particle B, we would say, has a charge of 3 millicoulombs, and they are separated by a distance of 9 micrometers. So to find the force in between them, we would use Coulomb's law, F equals K charge A times charge B divided by the separation between them squared. Now you'll note that when I write the equation, I like using the D instead of the R because I like saying the distance in between them as opposed to the radius because these two charges are not moving in a circle. And so saying the radius sometimes causes students to feel the need to cut this 9 and half and use 4.5 for the distance, which would be incorrect. Another common mistake that's made, the students will inadvertently add these two numbers together, even though there's a uh, multiplication sign in between them. So please watch out for those common mistakes. So let's try and finish the question. The k value, we said, was 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Newtons meters squared over Coulomb squared. That's going to be time 5. And what I like to do at this point, instead of writing in 5 millicoulombs right into the problem, I'm going to convert that right away. So I'm going to say 5 millicoulombs equals 5 times 10 to the negative third coulombs. All the numbers should be in recorded in coulombs and meters in order to cancel out the units. So that's going to be 5 times 10 to the negative third coulombs that parentheses, 3 times 10 to the negative third coulombs, running out of the room there, sorry about that, divided by 9 times 10 to the negative sixth meters squared. And so if you complete the math, put that in your calculator, do a little math, you end up with an answer of 
7 times 10 to the 15th newtons. And that's how we solve a simple Coulomb's Law equation. Now what's interesting and kind of useful about Coulomb's Law is this is that Coulomb's law is just another force. So we can see other scenarios. So we could talk about, if we wanted to, a molecule that has a positive nucleus and an electron orbiting around the outside, much like we did in the last unit. So this thing is going in a circle. We know it has a set speed and it has a centripetal acceleration, and the force causing that acceleration now could be the electric force. And so when you set up your net force equations, you would set it up exactly like you set up problems last unit with satellites orbiting planets. Another kind of problem we might see would be if you had two charged particles tied to strings. So if we over here, if we had a positive charge and a positive charge, these two particles, because they have the same charge, would repel each other outward, there'd be a force electric. The reason they don't completely fly away is that there's a force of gravity pulling them down, and you could be asked to compute what the tension force is in that string. So you just treat the electric force as any other force. It doesn't have any special powers or properties other than it's caused by when two charged particles are near each other. And your homework then is to start the worksheet the sub is going to give you. Numbers 1 through 3 are just going to test your ability to add together the charges and masses of protons, electrons, and neutrons. You'll have to look these numbers up in the back of your book or on the internet what those values are. The next several questions are going to test your ability to work with forces. Questions 4 through 6 are simple plug and chug problems involving Coulomb's Law. Questions 7 and 8 start moving into some of the uh, different scenarios we need to be able to deal with. 9 and 10 deal, and 11 deal again with some relatively straightforward plug and chug problems. If you need more help or ideas, feel free to use your textbook. It talks, again, explains how to use the equation, but mostly we're just trying to see if we can use this equation in the same way that we use the force of gravity equation in the last chapter. Have fun.